Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. A couple of months ago I think I posted a video about um, King's, so King's College London. A lot of you came back and said it's only fair for you to do the same for the other universities you've been to. Um, and the second university I went to for my masters was Imperial College London and then I went to um, UCL, so University College London for my PhD. I read biomedical sciences there, I did an MRes which is a masters of research before going to do a PhD at UCL. Um, and I'm gonna break it up into, so I've written loads of notes to make sure I don't forget. I'm going to break this video up into three sections. Firstly, I'm gonna talk about the academic experience, so the actual education that I got. Secondly, I'm gonna talk about the location. Um, and then thirdly, I'm gonna talk about the social aspects and the actual wider community that you find at Imperial. So I'll leave the timestamps for that down below, go and click on it and watch the bit that you please. So starting off with education, now without a shadow of a doubt, Imperial College London has probably one of the best, if not the best, standard of education in the UK and also in the world. I think it ranks probably number, was it number five in the world or something? It's extremely prestigious and you definitely feel it when you go there and you also definitely feel it when you come out of it and you graduate and you try to apply for jobs or PhDs. I definitely felt like having Imperial on my CV helped a lot with getting into a PhD program um, and I'm sure it helps with getting a job as well. The university is so heavy on research and it's a research intensive university that no matter what it is that you want to work on, no matter what projects that you want to do, there is someone that's doing that um, across the board. Now I was working on one project that was cancer research um, and the other one was blast injuries, so to do with traumatic brain injury. And for both projects, I was inundated with the amount of support and the number of labs that I can go to to collaborate with, just within Imperial itself. I also found that there were loads of funding opportunities, so if you are looking to do a PhD there, or even a master's there, there were a number of different scholarships, a number of different um, studentships, uh, programs that can help you fund your your degree um, and it's available across the board so not just for people that come from you know deprived backgrounds but also those that maybe have a special skill or have you know whatever reason it is that you need to be funded or you would like to be funded there is funding there definitely look for funding opportunities at Imperial College London because I know that there were so many and I'm sure now there are even more than there were before One other, another thing that I really liked about Imperial in terms of education is that because you have such a huge network of people that are doing amazing things, groundbreaking research, you find that you make a lot of good connections, a lot of strong connections. I networked a lot when I was at Imperial and I made a lot of strong connections that I still speak to today, um, even though a lot of them have retired now because they were much older or they're still there or have moved on, I still speak to them and they still contact me to ask me how I'm doing and what I'm getting up to and if I'd like to publish any more of the work that I did when I was there and I'm still publishing the work that I did when I was there. So I left Imperial in 20 when was it, 2013? So it's been quite a few years now and I'm still publishing work that I did at Imperial. I published three papers, I think, from just being there in uh, six months in a lab and six months in another lab, I published three or four papers, I think, in the end. And to top it all off, you end up graduating at the Royal Albert Hall. I mean, so prestigious, I absolutely loved that. Um, my grandma came all the way from Ethiopia just for that managed to get her visa to come here for a few months just for that and she absolutely loved it it was a great experience even though I paid <laughs> 50 pounds per head for like seven of us I think eight of us um, so pretty expensive but it was so so worth it I mean walking down that stage for even that 30 seconds definitely definitely makes the whole process worth it so in terms of negatives I would say that um, the only negative that I kind of experienced was that the facilities in terms of the library weren't that great now it may have changed don't quote me on this but I, I I was there last year as well actually, I know I was there this year and it looked the same to me. The library was quite small, quite cramped, not that much space considering how many students you do have on the main campus in South Kensington. So it definitely is something to think about. You do want your uni to have enough space for you to sit down and, you know, read a book and borrow a book and get some revision done and get some work done and I don't think I spent even, you know, a couple of hours in the library at all in my whole um, year that I was there just because it just didn't feel like a, an, an environment where I wanted to sit down and get work done um, compared to maybe UCL's library which is so grand and also King's has a beautiful library as well um, not on Guy's campus but they have a beautiful library on Strand as well so there's a lot of nice kind of facilities in the other universities but I found that Imperial the library wasn't that great um, and just study space in general 
I also found that the master programs there were more expensive. So um, if you are paying for a masters, obviously undergraduate, it's a, it's a standard uh, cost. But for the masters, I found that the degrees were slightly more expensive than comparing it to King's or UCL. But you know what? Maybe that isn't a fair comparison because Imperial is much higher in terms of the university ranking and its academic status. So I guess it makes sense for it to be a little bit higher. But I was looking at a similar course from other universities. It is a little bit less. Um, but I do think that the education that you get and the degree that you get is so, so worth it. So I, it, does out, it does balance out the cost and you can get a student loan for it now as well so you don't have to pay it outright like I had to do. Okay, moving on to location. So if you know anything about Imperial, you know where it is. It's based in South Kensington. You see the main road and you can kind of see the buildings and how grandeur it is. It really is beautiful. And I, I, I really love being in that area, especially coming from living in you know East London my whole life and then going there every day. It was really nice to see kind of big houses and um, big beautiful buildings that you know are completely out of your reach but you have it there to be able to look at. It definitely is really inspiring and it, it does push you towards trying to do your best and you know get the best. But for me, I think the location is more of a negative than a positive. Although, yes, it's in a great area, and I think at first that novelty is, you know, it's nice, but it does wear off very quickly. Um, so South Kensington, for those that don't know, is the heart of most of the museums in London, the big museums anyway. So you've got the V&A, the Victorian Albert, you've got the Science Museum, the Natural History Museum, I think there's a couple other smaller ones as well dotted around. But those are the big three museums that tourists come to on a daily basis. School children come to on a daily basis, especially in the half term holidays which happen in the UK every six weeks there's a holiday for students and families come to the museum and what ends up happening is you're sharing the same commutes, you're sharing the same travel with those people. So the tunnel where you go from the station to the university becomes an absolute headache, like a nightmare. Tapping in and out the turnstile oyster card barriers um, at South Kensington Station is an absolute headache. I ended up going, what station is it? The one before um, South Ken on the Piccadilly line. I can't remember which station it was now. But I ended up going back to Gloucester Road. I think Gloucester Road. I ended up going to Gloucester Road because it, it just calmed it down a little bit. Otherwise, it can take just five minutes just to get down the stairs and tap into the station because of how many people it is all year, <laughs> all year round, which is an absolute headache, especially if you just want to get in, you know, you just want to get into the lab, want to get into university, you don't want to have to deal with tourists every single day and students every single day. And the other thing is the campuses can be quite spread out. So you've got South Kent campus, which is the main one, and you've got the research labs there, the engineering buildings there, the business buildings there as well, business schools there too. Um, but you do have loads of buildings that are still Imperial College, but then are quite far out. So when I was doing some research for what projects I wanted to do, we had to go and visit the different labs. And I can't remember where, one was like in Hammersmith, one was quite far down the district line. So although it may seem like it's kind of central, depending on where you end up for a PhD or for a masters or even for your undergrad, you may be traveling quite far west. The fact that Imperial is in South Cairn, it's in the richest area in London, um, even if you wanted to get student accommodation, it is a lot more expensive than King's or um, than UCL, those kind of areas. And if you do, for example, get student accommodation the first year and then you want to move out for the second year, where are you going to live in Kensington? It's really not feasible. So that is a bit of a challenge. I think you're going to definitely have to end up living a little bit further out to come in every day, which again takes away from that experience. And if you want to live next to the university, why should you have to travel so far out to be able to do Moving on to the social aspect of Imperial College London. Now, this was the one part that I, I would say, let me down a little bit and in a good way and a bad way. So one thing is that there are many, the majority, I don't know if this is an actual fact, but in my course anyway, the majority of students were international students. Now, I love that about Imperial. It's a very diverse, it's a very multicultural university. I absolutely love that. However, what happens because of that is that those international students, for the most part, are paying two or three times more than a home student. I paid 7,000. They were paying almost 20, I think, 20 something thousand for their fees alone and then accommodation, etc. I found that at Imperial, it was just head down, very competitive. Everyone was kind of in their own lane, getting on with what they had to get on with. And it meant that I did really well at Imperial. It meant that I got my head down straight away 
and I got a really good grade. Distinction in the end, a really high distinction. I think I was in the 90%, which is amazing um, for university level. And I think it was mostly because I had no social life. I would literally would go into university, get on with what I had to get on with, and then go home and repeat. And I even came in on the weekends. It was just the norm. It was what people were doing there. And I just kind of saw it as the norm, and I thought, okay, that's just how it has to be. It just felt a lot more academic, and I remember Freshers' Fair not feeling as sort of hyped as it did at King's or even at UCL. At King's and UCL, you really feel it. The freshers are all out. There's events and posters, and people are dressing up, and things around the building and you can really feel that it's fresh as we can you know there's a new cohort of students coming in whereas that's imperial it didn't definitely didn't feel like that it kind of just yeah, it was just normal <laughs> i didn't feel like there was i didn't even did i even know where freshers fair was i don't even know where it was it wasn't really like a thing that was out there the way that it was during my phd at ucl or at king the other really good thing about having loads of international students is that there are such a wide range of societies um, there are societies to fit pretty much anybody so not just different nationality there are societies that cater to people's interests and your likes and even dislikes i think most unions are like this anyway even kings and ucl but imperial in particular had so many different societies especially like i said national kind of societies um, that represented the people that were there because it was so diverse um, and I really really like that. One in particular that I remember really enjoying was um, synchronized swimming and I know this is a bit weird and a bit different but I remember going to a couple of synchronized swimming um, society sessions um, and it's it's so much harder than it looks. People look so gracious in the water when they synchronize swim but I, <laughs> I was so lost um, but it was really fun and that was something that I really enjoyed about in Imperial as well, just having that sort of diversity, just it just brings a lot of colour to the university at the same time. Okay, I think that I've touched upon any everything that I wanted to say about Imperial. I mean, overall, honestly, I loved Imperial. I think it's one of my favourite universities of all five universities that I've been to. Um, definitely academically strong. It's made my CV so much stronger than it was before. Do let me know what your thoughts are. If you've been to Imperial, if you've been to... UCL or Kings and you want to discuss anything do let me know and if there's anything that you think I am mistaken on or you want to correct to me again let me know this is my experience to caveat that by no means is it a global experience um, this is just an experience that I had when I was there a couple of years ago a couple of years ago a few years ago <laughs> not that much negative to say about it to be completely honest I hope you enjoyed this video if you did please give me a huge thumbs up and also don't forget to subscribe to my channel to see more from me and I'll see you guys in my next video Bye.